uh, if talented and determined, would you recommend youngsters to skip college and become pros like Pete or Andre? No, I really wouldn't because I know you, you talk of, mentioned a few players there that did it and made it, and uh, there's so many others that skip college that want to be a pro tennis player that don't make it that it's probably not a good idea. If you have some kind of phenom and the whole family's poor and they need the money so that they can survive and playing pro tennis is the way that they're going to fend for their family, then I would say yes if you were good enough, but not until you were beating some of the pros that are making money out on the tour would I do it because if you go out there and you don't make it and you haven't gone to college and you had a chance to get a full scholarship playing college tennis, earn an education, uh, you know, it's such a small percentile that are going to make it yep. uh, that those others are going to fall off the wagon and not have the chance. I would advise, even if you were going to make it, go four years to school, have a great college experience, have free school from free college and get a degree. And then if you don't make it on the pro tour, you can be a scientist or a doctor or a lawyer or a, a gardener yep. or whatever it is. And okay. uh, you haven't wasted what you could have had playing tennis at the collegiate level. Yeah, I, I like the example you gave where, you know, in case, you know, the probability of someone becoming a pro is pretty low. One, one, one lady at, the, at, at our club two days back mentioned that the chances of someone becoming a pro is much, much, much less than someone who can become a doctor, for example. It's a lot right. easier to become a doctor. It's more so. like winning a lottery. Yeah, right. Those kind of percentages. Yeah, okay. Uh, what are the qualities needed to reach top ten in the world? And especially since you're, uh, since you're a teacher and a coach, I want to hear your perspective on you see some kid and you go, can this be the one or can that be the one? Do, do, does that thought even come to your mind after teaching? Well, I tell you, the, there are so many variables that go into being in the top ten of the world, for example, and um, there are a lot of the same types of things that everyone has to go through to get to wherever level they get if they keep playing, whether they make it or not. A lot of those things are the same that are requirements. And, you know, there's hundreds, there's hundreds if not thousands of little things that every successful pro tennis player has done, you know. And, um, you know, part of it might be working long hours hitting tennis balls against the wall or against the ball machine or squeezing tennis balls to get their arms stronger or, uh, you know, doing the mental exercises it takes. So, you know, it's it's hard to pinpoint, but I know I've got a friend in Ashland, Kentucky, who's a dermatologist, and his daughter played the pro tour, Julie Diddy, and was a very successful tennis player. And, uh, you know, he has qualifications of hundreds of different things that champion tennis players need, you know, mentally, emotionally, financially, uh, physically, and it's, uh, he would be a much better person to ask about that because uh, he's actually chronicled it and written about it, of what it takes to become a great tennis player. Hmm. Okay, um, what's your advice for young aspiring, uh, you know, young, young and aspiring tennis players? Well, the thing that I would tell young aspiring tennis players is to, first of all, set goals for yourself. What are your short-term goals rather than, I want to be a tennis pro, because that's a long-term goal and it's very nonspecific. Um, but I would tell them to study hard in school, go to school, learn from school things about tennis, because tennis is all about getting to the top, is all about disciplining yourself and having a mental discipline, a physical discipline, and an emotional discipline in approaching whatever your job aspiration is, whether it's tennis or being a carpenter or, or an architect or whatever it might be. Uh, hard work, taking care of your body, taking care of what you eat, 
and how, getting a lot of sleep and developing a focus, a love for the game and a focus where you're able to concentrate and then lose your concentration in between points and then get your concentration back so that you can learn how to concentrate almost every point. Because it's said that it's hard or it's impossible for anybody to concentrate through a whole match. But if you really work on your powers of concentration at specific times, and then being able to break your concentration in between points, mm. and then refocus... I think that's a very important trait that is not talked about much that great players all have, the ability to refocus. Can you explain a little bit about what do you mean by re... No, what do you mean by breaking the concentration between the points? That's a very good question. What I mean is it is impossible for somebody just to concentrate on a tennis match through the scope of the match the whole time without having some type of letdown. However, if you can build up for the point and then divert your attention off of the game, and this is done by the players, you'll see them like fiddling with their strings or going to get a towel and putting their head in the towel or something, or looking down at their shoes, or walking in a way where they're not stepping on a line, a superstition. All of these are certain ways that players cope in breaking their concentration from the last point, refocusing for the next point, and being able to take each point as an individual situation. Because you may pay 200, play 200 points in a tennis match, you know, and the person that wins the match is the person that probably is going to be able to focus on each point the best and kind of filter out negative thoughts or things that have gone on earlier in the match or things that are on the periphery while you're playing the match. Oh, excellent point. Concentration, key, and how to, how to come back even after we lose momentarily, the ability to bounce back. I have, I have read that and some pros have talked about how how to have a short term memory loss is that something that you would mm -hmm. like if you play at a bad shot bad point how to, how to how to bounce back forgetting that right and a lot of these great players that may go in uh, style with some of their quirky behavior but a lot of the players that are really good can never really see that when they make a mistake it's really their fault there has to be some coping mechanism or so of saying oh the you know, the, the wind was messing with me there or somebody moved over there or so, something to let them say, it's not me that made a mistake, I'm still strong, you know, as to not dent their ego, so to speak, when they're competitive. Yeah. Uh, I had another question in my mind that I momentarily forget. The, it was a chain of thought that I was getting based on your response to the questions. And uh, let, me, let me take a moment here to re regroup. 